Science Makes It Work, Secrets of the Snow Globe. Written by Katherine Steer and illustrated by Floss Pottage. Come look, Lily, Grandma said. Lily peered into a small glass ball at a frosty town tucked within. It's a snow globe, Grandma continued. Tip it and watch closely. Lily's eyes opened wide. Sparkling snow swirled, falling on the little houses inside. That's just like the snowstorm last month, Lily exclaimed, when we made a snowman wrapped in your polka dot scarf. I remember, said Grandma. Lily couldn't stop staring at the snowy scene. It's so beautiful, Lily thought, imagining snow globes lining her bookshelf. So over the next year, she collected her own snow globes. Her favorites held tiny models of things she loved, places she visited, even places she dreamed of seeing one day. As Lily's collection grew, so did her questions. Looking at snow globes just wasn't enough. She wanted to know about them too. Lily first wondered who invented the snow globe. She read online that no one knew for sure, but the article described the grand 1878 Paris Exposition where a glass company displayed the first snow globes on record. Each held a tiny figure with an umbrella. Wow, thought Lily, snow globes have been around for more than 100 years. As Lily scrolled through the article, Boots bounded into her room, bumping her dresser. A snow globe crashed to the floor. Sorry, Lily, Dad said as he and Mom rushed in to help clean up the sharp pieces. Boots just wanted to play, Mom said as she wiped up the spilled liquid. Lily patted Boots and glanced down in surprise. The snow globe's penguin looked different, much smaller than it had inside the globe. Why, Lily wondered, does the figure in a snow globe look bigger than it really is? Flipping through a science book at school the next day, Lily read that light moves in waves. It bounces off the things around us and travels to our eyes. Our eyes turn the light into signals that are sent to our brain, which creates an image. Lily learned that clear liquid in a round shape, like a snow globe, can act like a magnifying glass. And when light moves through water in a curved container, the waves travel different distances to exit the container and reach our eyes. This tricks the brain into seeing the objects inside as closer or bigger than it really is. Lily decided to try an experiment. She filled both a round glass bowl and a square, clear vase with water. Then she held matching buttons beneath the water in the center of each. When she looked through the water in the curved glass, the button looked bigger. But when she looked through the water in the straight glass, the button wasn't magnified. Just like the snow globe, Lily observed. The next day, Lily noticed something as she fed her fish. Those fish food pellets sink fast. Not like flitter. Flitter, Dad asked. That's the word for a snow globe's pretend snow, Lily explained. And I know flitter falls to the bottom of the globe because of gravity, the force that pulls things toward the earth. But why does the flitter fall so slowly? Any ideas? Dad asked. Maybe the water inside the globe isn't plain water at all, Lily said. But what is it? And how does it change the way flitter falls? At the library, Lily found a craft book with instructions on how to make a homemade snow globe. The book suggested changing the density of the water by adding a liquid that is soluble in water, called glycerin. What's density? Insoluble, she asked mom. And what's glycerin? You can look up the first two, mom suggested, and we can stop at the store for glycerin. It's used to make things like lotion and hand sanitizer. D-E-N-S-I-T-Y, Lily typed into the library computer. Water, dish soap, glycerin low density. Oh, said Lily when the definition popped up. It's how heavy something is compared to how much space it takes up. 
objects sink faster in water than in molasses because water is less dense than molasses, and something that's soluble can dissolve into something else. Syrup, molasses, honey, high density. Lily paused thinking, I'm guessing that glycerin dissolves into the water and makes it denser, so the glitter inside moves slowly. Want to test that out too, Mom asked. Lily grinned, yep. After gathering supplies, Lily added a pinch of glitter to a glass jar filled with tap water. In a second jar, she mixed together water and glitter with some glycerin. Then she replaced the jar lids. Lily tapped both jars upside down at the same time. Then she tipped them right side up again. The glitter in the water only jar sank quickly, but the glitter in the water glycerin mixture stayed suspended longer, falling gently and slowly. I'd say you're a snow globe scientist now, Mom said. What's next? Time to create a snow globe myself, Lily declared. Lily hunted through the junk drawer and found a tiny plastic snowman. Perfect, almost, she said. Using her waterproof paints, Lily made one small change. Then she glued the snowman onto the bottom of a jar lid. Lily filled the jar with her water, glycerin, and glitter mixture. Once the snowman lid was screwed tightly in place, Lily flipped the jar and tied on a pretty bow. At Grandma's house, Lily hid her surprise behind her back. Remember that snowstorm, Graham? When we built a snowman and wrapped it in? My polka dot scarf, said Grandma, I remember. Lily brought out her gift. She gave it a shake, for you. Grandma peered closely, then she pulled Lily tight. Best snow globe ever, Grandma said. <laughs>